Joseph Nib, phase three clock. It's a mature style with the low caddy top. Uh, it's got no feet and it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's not a, a show off, just blends into the uh, decor of a, of a country house. And this is an interesting one because it's quarter striking and it has an alarm and a calendar. Uh, I think that Joseph Nib had a price list and uh, you had optional extras like the, the mounts on top here and the escutcheons, um, the calendar and the alarm. And alarms are not at all common so that uh, this is an unusual clock because it woke somebody up every morning in about 1690 when it was made. It's unusual again to have this expensive skeletonized chapter ring and you can see how the matting on the center of the dial has been extended out underneath the chapter ring itself and then the, the fixings of the chapter ring have to be hidden away um, so that they're not visible. So these skeletonized chapter rings are very expensive to produce because even the half hour markers have got to be um, cut away and then the matting is extended from the centre of the dial so that it appears um, in between each of the Roman numerals. So the handle here is a beautiful gilt brass and you've got the foliate and the knob in the centre and the chamfered edges and it's mounted outside the twin pommels here and the pommels themselves have these backing plates uh, round dish like saucers so it's a quality job. The floriate mount on the front here um, is matched by similar cast floriate mounts on each side. Here you've got the strike, no strike lever, which just clicks across and then it will be quiet at night for you. So in that position, it's switched off until you switch it back on in the morning, but your alarm will still go off. The spandrels in all the four quarters of the dial um, are just a standard nib production, uh, nicely chased. And the calendar, in this aperture which is uh, almost square but has nice gentle radii which just gives it that touch of quality. These calendars are always very difficult to adjust whereas Tompion had the sense to put a little pinhole on the edge of the calendar so you could use a pin to move it forward. Um, it's a great fiddle to move it forward on the uh, February and the 30 days have September, April, June and November, just moving it forward the one day. And here's the silvered alarm disc in the centre um, and you set it against the hour hand so that it goes off in the morning at uh, quarter past six. So on the dial plate here, he signed his signature as Joseph Nib, London, rather than the doggerel Latin um, in the flowing signature on the back plate. Altogether, a rather fine phase three clock made in about 1690. So the striking takes place on three bells. The quarters are ting-tang, and then the hour um, at the top here of the hour um, strikes the hour on a low bell. So at any moment now, it's going to strike quarter past. There he goes. There we are. Ding dong, quarter past four. And at the half past, it will go to um, ding dong. And then at the quarter to the three. And on the hour,
just striking the out, one, two, three, four, five, on the lower bell. So it's about to strike a uh, quarter past, and you can see the two hammers for the quarter bells on the right-hand side of the picture. There she goes. Ding dong, quarter past. And if I move the hands on to half past, you'll get the two. And at quarter two, and now we're coming up to the hour, and it's not full quarter striking, it won't do four on the hour, it'll just strike the hour of six. And on the other side, you've got the alarm bell to wake you up in the morning. The alarm disc is in the centre here, so you set the time of the alarm against the hour hand, and the, the two revolve together until um, it reaches the correct time, and it wakes you up in the morning. So the back of the clock, uh, the back door here, has quite a small window in it, and opens to reveal the lovely engraving at the top you've got this wonderful swirl of foliage which engages your eyes so you can go around the design and uh, examine the details uh, without really knowing that you're doing so at the bottom of the back plate you've got these lovely crossed flowers and what a lovely flowing signature joseph nib London, I fake it. It's also meant to be carried round, and so you can see the little pendulum lock here. So you can stop the pendulum, click it in, and take it up to your bedroom to act as your alarm clock for the morning. And then when you get the clock in the bedroom, you can release it and start it ticking again, ready to wake you up in the morning. In this phase three, period of Joseph's production, um, he made these beautiful clocks which must have graced many a, a gentleman's parlour rather than going into the nobility.